Hi everyone, welcome to lesson one of the beginner series. If you're coming from the absolute beginner series, congratulations on finishing that. And I'm excited for you to start this new series that I've spent a lot of time planning. So if you have never ever taken ballet before and you have not done my absolute beginner series, I would highly recommend you try that before you try the series. This is the more advanced series that should be taken after absolute beginners. In this series, we are going to be focusing on technique. Of course, we will be still learning some new fun things like jumps and turns. Let's just get started. I want one of the focus for today to be about engaging your thighs and engaging your abs. So that's why we are going to start with plies with hands on the bar for today. So we are going to start in first position and we're going to do things a little bit slower. So demi one and two, come up three, and four, again, five, and six, come up, squeeze the thighs, now grand, demi, and two, three, and four, press the heels down, and six, and seven, all of this in second position, two demis, one grand, one, and two, come up, squeeze your thighs, and uh, demi, again, straighten up, Squeezing the thighs, grand one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. Point, let's close in fifth position. Same thing, two demis, one grand, one, and two, and a three, and four. I'm speeding this up, five, and six, and a seven, and eight, grand one, two, don't stick your butt out, press the heels down to the ground, and then straighten and point, and then we'll close in first position and we'll do some side stretches. So since we were working on the right side, we're gonna start with the right arm, one, high fifth on two, look left three, and four, stretch, come up five, and six, and open, switch arms, left hand, one, and two, stretch three, and four, and five, and six, we'll lower, both arms, and then you're done. So two demis, one grand, first position, second position, fifth position. Come back in first to do your side stretches, and that's it. All right, let's start with arms on the bar in first position with our plies. Six, seven, and eight. Demi, one, two, up, squeeze your thighs. Down again, and up. Slow grand, demi, then grand. Make sure to go through the demi, heels on the ground before you straighten, point. Let's do this all again in a second. Two and uh, up, squeeze. Are you still engaging your abs? Don't let it go. Now grand, demi, grand. Have to go through demi to straighten, point, go through first and then fifth. Straighten, demi, straighten, now grand. All the way down, press your heels, then come up, point, let's close in first. Right arm, two, Three, four, five, six. Open the arms and lower left arm. One, you're here on two, then stretch. Come back up, high fifth and open. Let's lower the arms and you're done. Good job. I am going to sneak in a little correction here before we move on to the left side. When you were stretching side and side at the very end, just make sure that you're only stretching your torso. So maybe the first half of your torso and you're not stretching from your hips, right? If I was stretching my hips, my hips would move, but I'm in first position. So I'm giving you two counts to get to this nice, perfect high fifth and you're straight up and down. You're not leaning either side, straight in the middle. And then you stay still this way as you stretch. Make sure to not lean in the opposite direction of where you're stretching. That sometimes happens when we want a deeper stretch, but 
we're stretching your upper body, not our hips. Just imagine a candy cane or um, an upside down letter J. You're straight and then you curve at the very top. You're not curving at the middle. All right, everybody, let's move on now. All right, even before the combination starts, you're squeezing your thighs together and you're pulling your abs up. Six, seven, and eight. Demi, squeeze, and down, and squeeze up. Down, grand, heels on the ground, then come up, point, second position. One, two, up, still squeezing, even though your legs are not together. And up, squeeze, down, knee side, don't stick your butt out. Point, let's close to fifth. One, up, engage your abs, don't let them go. Up, now run, demi, all the way down. Demi, up, point, close, left arm. Look at your left, look at the right side. Come up, open the arms, switch. Right arm, look left. Come up, open, let's lower both arms for the end. Great job, everybody. You're done with plies now. Now we are moving on to tendus from first position. We're going to start with five, six, seven, open arms on eight, flex one and two, come back to first, tendu front and close, tendu front and close to the side, flex foot, come in to first and a tendu and close, and a tendu, and close. Flex back, and close, in first, and a tendu, and close, and a tendu, and close. This is on qua. Flex, and come back, to first, and a side, close, and a side, close. After that, we'll stretch with, again, something very similar, one, two, and then three, four, all the way down, five, Six, come up, seven, eight, now, again, one, two to the bar, three, four, roll back, come up, seven, eight, and after that, we'll just take a plie, stretching the arches, straighten, and we'll balance with arms in first. All right, so that was flex for two counts, come in for two counts, tendu and tendu, side, flex for two counts, come in for two counts, tendu, and tendu. Back, same thing, side, same thing. And then we have our to the bar, down, to the bar, back, plie, force arch, and we'll balance in first. Let's get started. So I hope you're not too confused that I demonstrated on my left side and we're starting off with the right. This is a good brain exercise. Starting in first, seven, eight, one, two, three, Four, tendu front, close, tendu front, close, side, in, squeeze, point the foot. Make sure to point to the back, cross it, right behind you, to the side, squeeze, in, tendu, squeeze, stretching, one, two, three, four, to the corner, all the way down, one, two, to the bar, roll back, let's plie, force arch, come up, to balance, you can do it, relax your shoulders and your neck here, just squeezing your legs, and we'll open, come down. Remember what we talked about in please about how you only really want to be stretching your upper body and not 
moving around your hips. So it's a similar concept for here. One, two, you're a candy cane. You're just stretching from the top, three, four. And then as you come forward, I'm flattening my back. I'm almost stretching to this corner, stretching to this corner with a flat back, I'm not sticking my butt out, and then just coming straight down. So let's keep that in mind as you do your left side. Seven, eight, flex, two, come back, two, first. Front, close, front, close, flex side, come in, side, close, side, close to the back, in, cross, back, last time, in, tondu, close, tondu, close, stretch, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, let's plie, force arch, strain the knees, engaging the abs to balance, you can do it, relax the shoulders and your jaw here. Good job, everybody. So I hope you have been enjoying the music so far, the last combination. We were using some Christmas music. That's because I am filming this lesson right before Christmas. I'm feeling pretty festive right now. So you obviously are all gonna see this after Christmas, but that's the reason why you're listening to Christmas music in January. Now we're going to move on to fifth position, tendus. If you are a level one, you will keep your arms in second position with the elbows up the whole entire time. But if you're a level two or you're ready for a challenge, we are going to be using your arms. Five, six, seven, eight. So here, if you're a level two, front and close and front and close and front and close. Arms to the side. One, close back and two, close front and three, close back. Arms in front of you. One, close and two, tendus close. This is the third one. Close, arms open, and we'll stretch forward for one, two, three, four, come up, five, six, seven, eight, and then we'll reverse. So tondu back and close, tondu back and close, tondu back and close. Level two switches arm. Again, if you're not doing the arms, you're just keeping it side the whole time and squeezing your legs. Tondu and close, tondu close back. This is the third tondu. Arm switches here and ton do close and ton do close to the front and close and squeeze and squeeze. Reversing the stretch, we're going to stretch back two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, keeping theme with the candy cane idea that we talked about at the beginning, we're stretching up to go back. We are not doing this where I'm sticking my hips forward. Ooh. That hurts my back. So I'm keeping upper body straight as I stretch back. All right, everybody, let's get started. Let's start in fifth position with left hand on the bar. Six, seven, eight. Tondu, close, tondu, close, and close. Switch the arms if you're a level two. Close back. Tondu, close. Remember to keep squeezing the legs. Tondu, directly behind you. Arm opens to stretch forward. Don't stick your butt out. Come up. Arm side, reverse. Tondu, close fifth. Tondu, close fifth. Tondu, close. Arms. And front, close back, close front, low to high. Tondu, close, tondu, close, tondu, close. Stay here, lift up like a candy cane. Come up, open, arms down. I am going to give one quick correction. As we were tondoing back, make sure that your tondu back is directly back of you. It's not at like a weird 
kind of backside angle, which is something we usually do. That was an exaggeration, but most of us are kind of here. I believe that the reason most of us have a hard time crossing our tendus is because our idea of back is just anything that is behind my arm. But in ballet, the idea of back is directly behind your nose. So right in the back of your head, all right? So make sure you're not lingering out here. You're really crossing. Same thing when you're closing in fifth position. Your fifth position is crossed. If you are having any type of knee pain or you have turnout troubles right now, definitely feel free to do tendu, close third, which is a heel, the arch type of position. And this is kind of a much more relaxed way to be turning out until you can figure out how to use your turnout muscles. If you want to just try the combination with your arms, feel free to. And if you get confused, just go back to having your arm side, okay? Seven, eight. Front, close. Front, close. Arm side. Tondu, close. Back, tondu, close. Tondu, close. To the back, close. Fifth, all the way back. Cross it. Close, arm side. Get ready to stretch. Up to go down. We'll come up. Open the arms. Let's reverse the whole thing. Back and back. Back. Arms side. Tondu. Close. Tondu. Close. Tondu. Arms low. Arms high. Close. Close, close, stay here, lift, stretch, back, come up, open, arms down. So now we are going to be going back to facing the bar and we will be doing our classic combination of 8844221111 with a little bit of a twist. After all of that, we will build back up, reversing it by doing one, 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 two, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then of course eight and eight. So let me show you what that looks like and you can feel free to practice with me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, one, two, one, 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 one. Now reversing it. One, 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 and two, and two, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, then eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then eight, five, six, seven, eight. And then after all of that, we'll just rise in first position and balance with our arms in first position and we'll open and we'll come back down. All right, let's try this out. All right, starting with our right leg, first position, both hands at the bar. Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, switch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, switch. Four, three, four, switch. Two, three, four, switch. Two, and two, Duck, duck, walk, walk again. One, 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 one. Now two, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And rise. You did a great job. Don't worry about it if you didn't get it right the first time. You will have many more tries in the future. Let's come down. Good job, everyone. So now we are ready for a round of jambes for fifth position. I will be demonstrating on my right side. Five, six, seven, and eight. We're starting with a passe for one and two and three, and four, hold, five, six, point seven, 
Runners arm back on eight. And front and back. This is slow. Front and back. Three faster. Front and front and front. Close back. Develop a one and two and three and four. Hold five and six and seven, eight and uh, back and front and uh, back and front. Three faster back and back and back. Close fifth. At the end, we'll just balance on flat with passe front. So you might have noticed that I'm not really giving you specific counts for the develop haze. I just want you to keep in mind that you have six counts to hold something. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then on seven, it touches the ground, and then on eight, it's getting ready to run a jump in some direction. So because you have those six counts, you can choose to do a really fast develop hay, like one, two, and then you have three, four, five, six, seven. So you're building a lot of strength because you have a much longer hold in the air. Or you can choose something a little bit more slow pace with one and two and a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I'm doing in that second version was I was taking much longer to get my leg extended in the air so that I don't have to hold that much. So it is up to you to choose where you want to be. You can do a faster developé, you just hold for much, much longer and build strength, or you can do a nice, slow, easy developé so that you can work on your arms and your musicality. So this is up to you. Make the choice that is best for your body. Let's get started now. Fifth position with right foot in front. Six, seven, and eight. Arms down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Front and back. Front and back. Faster, front, front, last one, close fifth. From the back, develop pay. Hold, 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 tondu to the front. Slow back and front, and back around front. Fast one, back back, close, let's passe, balance, you can do it, remember to keep that knee side, and abs in, let's come down, so Rana Jams are circles of the legs, and we are doing a full semicircle. Funny thing to say. But what I meant by that is I don't want you to cut off your semicircle. So don't do tendu front, rana jam and end it here and then close because you're cheating, right? You're not really doing the full semicircle by going all the way directly behind you. Same thing coming back all the way directly behind you, all the way in front of you. No ending the rana jam here. It has to end directly in front of you. All right, let's get started. Remember, it's your decision of how long you want to hold that develop hay in the air. Six, seven, eight. Develop hay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back eight. Front, back, front, back. Three faster, one, Two, last one, close fifth. Develop hay with the arms. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back, front, back, front. Three, one, two, three, close front. Now passe to balance. You can do it. 
Make sure to keep that standing leg straight. It tends to bend a little bit for most people. All right, let's just come down. Arms low, finish it off. Good job. Now we're going to move on to prop haze. I'll be demonstrating on the left side, so be prepared. Five, six, seven, flex, eight, and strike, flex, and strike, flex, and strike, hold, PK up, flex, and strike, back, and strike, front, and strike, hold, PK up, flex, and strike, flex, and strike, flex, and frappe, hold, PK, on qua to the side again, and strike, and in, and strike, and hold. We'll let go of the bar. We are comfortable at this point, and then we'll point. We'll close in fifth position. So we are doing three frappes with one pique at the end, front side, back side. That's the en qua pattern. And the trick to balancing at the very end is to make sure your weight is on the ball of the standing foot. Right before you let go, you're checking, oh, is all my weight on that foot right now? Can I slide a piece of paper under this heel? Can I elevate without having to do this, right? You're not shifting just the upper body. You're actually shifting the whole entire body on this foot to balance. And we'll talk about weight transfers later in the series, but for now, for that balance, I want you to keep in mind that you should be on the ball of that standing foot in order to balance correctly. All right, let's get started. Fifth position, right foot front, getting ready, squeezing our thighs together even here. Six, seven, flex, eight. Strike, in, strike, in, strike, P, K, flex, hold. Strike, in, strike, in, strike, P, K, flex. Back, 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 P, K, flex. And one, and two, third one, flex, hold. Let go. Transfer the weight to the ball. You should technically already be here. And point, close, arms down. We haven't really talked about weight and weight placement yet in this series, but we are going to get to that. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek of it for now. But let's keep in mind that at least for the balance, the only way to achieve this is that you need to have your weight on the ball of your foot, otherwise you will fall away from the bar the moment you let go of the bar. Let's move on now. Six, seven, flex, eight. Strike, strike, flex. Strike, hold, P, G. Flex, strike, strike, front, strike, hold, P, G. Flex back. In, strike, in, strike, Hold, P, G. Flex, strike, front, strike, back, strike, hold, 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 let go if you want to. Point that foot. Try your best to hold this. And we'll point, close, arms, lowers. You're probably noticing that we're doing a lot of alternating between one hand and two hand on the bar today. There are some exercises where I want you to really just focus on your lower body. And I know that if I add in arms, it will confuse a lot of folks and really lose the essence of the exercise. And this fondue combination that we're about to do is one of those exercises where I do want you to focus more on what your legs are doing. No throwing in any tricky arms or anything like that yet. So we are going to start the combination in fifth position and we are going to fondue one, extend and hold and hold, fondue to the side and hold and hold, fondue to the back and hold and hold, on qua pattern and hold and hold, second time with rises, hold and hold and fondue, side, hold, hold, and fondue, back, hold, 
hold, last time, you can do it, hold, hold, and then we'll lower this foot and sneak it into that susu position, and then we'll slide that foot out, and then we'll plie, and we'll end the combination there. So we are just doing fondue holds on qua, on flat, and then again on qua, but with releve. Let's get started. Make sure to give yourself room to extend this right foot. Six, seven, eight. Fondue to the front. Hold, hold. Fondue to the side. Hold, hold. Fondue to the back. Hold, hold. To the side. Hold, hold. We're rising now. Fondue to the front. Hold just 45 degrees. Fondue to the side. Hold, hold. Fondue to the back. Hold. Fondue, side, and susu. And then we'll just come down from there. Good job, everyone. So let's keep in mind that we are only doing these fondues to 45 degrees. The goal of this is to build up strength. That's why there's a lot of the hold hold. While you're holding, don't just stay static and hold. I want you to think about elongating and extending your legs even longer and longer and longer, almost feeling like your legs will grow an inch or two. All right, so fondue, grow, 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 grow. I don't want you to grow up. I want you to just grow down, especially with this working leg, grow down, can you get even taller and taller and taller? All right, now let's get started. Six, seven, eight. Fondue to the front, hold, hold. Fondue to the side, hold, hold. Fondue to the back, hold. And fondue to the side, we're getting ready to rise. Fondue to the front. It's slow, remember that. Fondue to the side. Hold, hold. Fondue, extend, hold. Last time to the side. And we'll just do from here. And then we'll come down. Good job. So you are getting towards the end of bar. We are going to be doing grand bat ma's now. Let's start in the fifth position. We'll do two grand bat ma's in the en croix pattern. Five, six, seven, arms high on eight. You can of course always keep your arms in second if you don't want to be using them or if they confuse you in this combination. Definitely feel free to add them later or not. It's really up to you. This is your lesson. So five, six, seven, eight, and Gravatma, close, and gravatma, close, and side, no change, and side, then change, and back, well, I'm not kicking anything good, back, side again, last side, close, and let's plie here, su, su, scoop it up, and then let's balance in high fifth, and we'll of course open, and then we'll plie and come down in fifth. Let's just get straight into it. Remember, as always, I'm a broken record, squeezing the thighs together, pulling the abs up. Those are the two things I want you to focus on today. Six, seven, eight. Crumb up, mom, close. Crumb up, mom, close. Side, don't change. Side, then change. With the arms, Side, back, side. Plie, su, su, scoop it up. Arms high if you can. Relax the shoulders. Here, don't have them up like this. Push them down. Let's open and come back down. Good job, everyone. I know that in Robot Moms, people really, really like having their legs high, which I completely understand, but for now, I want you to really focus on a strong standing leg. Don't let your whole entire body wiggle around. Well, there of course will be a little bit of movement in your upper body because you are throwing the weight of your leg around. So I don't expect you to be 
perfectly still as you're doing all of this stuff. You will have to shift just a tiny bit, but I shouldn't be able to see anything super dramatic or drastic or anything like that. All right, so if you focus on a really strong standing leg and a really strong side body, and you keep your abs in the whole time, the leg that is being thrown up will lighten and it will get higher, I promise you. Okay, rant over, let's move on. Seven, eight, up, point, close, up, point, close, side, side, close, back, close, close, side, don't change, side, then change, plie, su, su, up, balance here and high fifth, you can let go if you want to. We'll open, plie, straight. Before we get off the bar, we will be doing a pirouette practice exercise. I've gotten a lot of requests to teach turns, and before we do a full-blown pirouette, we definitely need to learn how to break it down into smaller, more manageable steps, and this is what the preparation exercise at the bar will be. So we're gonna start in fifth position with our right leg back instead of front this time. So I'm going to demonstrate this a lot slower than what the music actually is, but just pay close attention and I'm sure you'll get it. Five, six, seven, and eight, and uh, tendu, and hold, and plie front, and hold, and uh, push, coupe front, susu back, plie strain, and uh, one, and hold again, plie, and hold, and uh, push, and balance, set it back, plie, and strain. So all we're doing is tendu and hold, putting it front and then plie and hold, and then we're pushing with both legs, coupe, hold, and we're putting this coupe leg back in susu, then we'll plie, and we'll do this all again. So we'll do this four times on the right side, I'll end the music, and then I'll start it again so that we can do it four times on the left side. And the goal of this exercise is to make sure that you get the plie and push movement for now. That's what you're definitely going to need for your pirouettes. It's a little bit different with this preparation, but we're starting with right foot and back, okay? Six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight. One, hold, and plie, and hold, push up to coupe, and susu, plie, straighten, and tendu, and hold, plie, hold, push, up, su, su, plie, straighten, one, hold, two, plie, three, hold, four, five, six, seven, plie, straighten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's end it right there and we'll start with the other side now. So don't worry if you're a little bit confused by where is my leg going, what's happening, just follow along and try your best. It is definitely okay if you don't get it right the first time around. Most people in this world who have realistic expectations should not expect beginners to get anything right their first time around. It comes with practice. Okay, no more rants, let's do this. This time we have left foot back in fifth position. We're doing our pirouette preparation. Six, seven, and eight. One, hold, two. Plie, and hold. And up, and hold. Susu, plie, straighten. Tendu, hold. Plie, hold. Push with both legs, hold. To the back, plie. Again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Last time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll end it right there. Now, 
we are moving on to learning jumps and that's why I have tennis shoes on. So let me tell you the reason why I was pretty hesitant to teach jumps in any of my classes. When you are in a studio setting, you are probably on a sprung floor. So if this is concrete and this is the wood floor in your dance studio, the wood would be floating a little bit on the concrete. It wouldn't be directly just sitting on top of the concrete. And because the wood is floating a tiny bit off the ground, when you jump on that wood floor, there is a little bit of give and the wood will absorb a lot of that jumping shock and it will save your knees. So that's why when you jump on concrete, it is going to do a lot of damage. So I have tennis shoes on to take on some of that shock because as far as I know, most apartments and houses don't come with sprung floors. So I'd highly recommend that you do this with tennis shoes on. Obviously, I won't be there to stop you if you're not gonna use tennis shoes. If you do, I will be very, very sad. So yes, keep that in mind. <laughs> and then the alternative is you can get a yoga mat and fold it in half. I've seen a lot of people do this. That was not my favorite option or route to go down just because the yoga mat is foamy and it will absorb a lot of the shock, which is good, but it doesn't give you that stable surface that you usually would feel if you were jumping on wood. So that's why I went with tennis shoes instead. Of course, there are cons to wearing the tennis shoes too. It is going to be a little bit harder to point your feet in because this is much more solid than ballet slippers. But I just wanted to give you that knowledge before you move on so that you can make the decision of whether or not to proceed with the jumps or to just move on and skip this for now. I am definitely not going to be offended if you do decide to skip jumps. So let's get into the combination of our first jump. We will be learning saute, which is probably the most basic jump in ballet. We will be jumping from two feet to two feet. What that means is that you plie on two feet, you jump off of two feet, and you also land on two feet. Some sautés can land on one foot, like a sauté arabesque lands in an arabesque, which is when one of your foot is back. So there are exceptions to it, but I want you for now to just think about sauté as a jump from two feet and landing on two feet, okay? So our combination is going to look like five, six, plie on seven, eight. So you have to be in plie before the combination even begins to actually prepare for it. Seven, eight, jump one, two, straighten three, four, hold five, six, plie, seven, eight, jump one, two, straighten three, four, hold five, six, seven, eight, jump one, two, three, four, hold five, Six, seven, eight, and jump, and jump, and jump, and jump. And the goal of this is to be able to jump and roll through the foot and end in a plie. Plie, jump, and then toe, ball, heel, and plie. So I want you to think about the nice, nice plie landing and the rolling through the foot the whole entire time. So what we're really doing is three slow saute and then four faster sautés. Let's get started. Seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, plie. Jump one, two, three, four, hold five, six, and plie. Jump one, two, three, four, hold five, six, and plie. Jump. Jump, jump, jump. Let's end it there. Let's do this one more time. Again, starting in first position. Even though your heels might not be touching, that's okay, don't worry about it. We're really just focusing on rolling through the feet in this exercise. Seven, eight, jump. One, two, three, four, hold. Five, six, plie. One, two, straighten, hold, plie. Jump, straighten, Hold, plie, get ready, and one. This is two, three, four. Good job. Welcome to Senate, everyone. Today, we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to be building up the complexity of the center combinations. And to do that, I need to show you guys some new angles that we will dance in in the center. If you can recall back to your first ballet lesson ever, the one thing you probably did was to learn your feet positions. And as you probably realize right now, your feet positions, they're used all the time in everything that you do in ballet, right? And I'm going to teach you something that is similar, but for center, we're going to learn our angles and our corners. And 
the angles and corners is something you will always be using every time you dance in center. It is the bare, bare basics. Every ballet school teaches the angles and corners very differently. I will teach you the most basic way that I've learned it and the easiest way to understand it for now, and then we will add on the complexity later. But in my first ballet studio that I've ever danced in, the teacher printed out these bright pink pieces of paper, and on the piece of paper, there'd be numbers and she would paste the numbers all around the corners and the angles of the room. And there'd be eight of them because there are eight danceable angles. So even though I don't have these numbers pasted on my wall, I want you to imagine them. Let's learn what the first angle is. So the angle that we're probably familiar dancing with is just this front facing angle, right? Where I'm looking straight at the audience. The first angle is actually not this. The first angle is actually a little bit more to the left. We're at a 45 degree, we're not facing the wall. I am not facing you. I'm in between that, right? At a 45 degree. So this is considered angle number one. If I turn 45 degrees, I'm facing you. This is considered to be angle number two. If I turn another 45 degrees, I am looking at the right corner, angle number three. And of course, if I just keep doing that, this is angle four. The back corner, angle five. Directly behind you, angle six seven, and of course this is eight, which leads us back to angle number one. So I'm gonna let that information sink in for a bit. I won't talk anymore about the angles. Let's do a tendu combination using the first three angles that we learned, one, two, and three. We're going to just do tendus en qua, starting in first position, five, six, facing angle number one. Please do it with me if this is your first time. And front, and close, and side, and close, and back, and close, and side. Change angles, so I'm just doing one tendu each way. Front, and side, go to the back, and side, and change. So in the last side tendu is really when I change my angle. Front, close, and side, close, and back, close, and side. To the front, one more time and front, close and side, close and back, close and side, and we'll close. So we're doing four tendus on qua, and the last closing, we're changing to angle number two. Four tendus, last tendu, we're closing and changing to the third angle. Tendus, close, change to the front again. Do your tendus, close, arms down. So we're moving in one direction, right? And then we're moving back to the middle. And if we were to do our left side, we are going to move in this direction and then move back to the middle. So if there's too much happening and you're getting a little confused, just put your hands on your hips and you can still do the tendus and it's okay if you miss one or two. What I really want you to get is the right angles at the right time, okay? Let's get started, everyone. First position facing angle number one, seven, eight, Front, side, back, side, change angles. Front, side, to the back, side, angle number three. Front, side, back, side, front again. Close, and close. Last one. Close. Good job, everyone. Same thing, starting at angle number three. Seven, eight, to the front, to the side, tendu back, point your foot, change angles. Front, side, back, side, angle number one and close, and close, and side, to the front. Front, side, tendu back, and side, let's close. Amazing. All right, everyone, we are going to be working on balances again, but this time around, we are going to be adding in arms. So we've done balances with hands on our hips, right? And just a quick refresher, what it looks like is, down, back, forward, side, back, 
forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward. But this time I want to step it up a notch. We will be adding in the correct arms. So what it really would look like is down, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward. But before we put the two together, I want you to just work on the arms. So the combination that we are going to work on right now will just include arms. It will look like down and uh, open and uh, down and uh, open, down, open and uh, down and uh, open. So nothing too fancy, just the arms. You can have your legs in parallel because it's just an arm exercise. Let's get into it right away. Ready? Let's have our arms in a second just to start. Seven and eight and uh, down. Open, down, open, down, open, down, open, down, down. Keep going. Open, down, open, down, open, down, open, down, open, down, open. Good. Job. So you probably realize that I like to count things out loud. And this is not just because that's how I like to teach, even though it is. It is just that when you say things out loud, it actually helps you to understand it a lot better. So yes, you can listen to me say side, back, forward. But if you say side, back, forward, it will probably do you much, much more good. So we are going to play the same music, do the same thing again. But instead, we are only going to do our legs. Side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, you get it. Hands on hips, and then we'll start adding in arms when we get very brave. But for now, let's just do the legs. Six, seven, and eight. Side, back, forward, back, forward, side, back, forward, side, back, forward. Keep going, side, forward, side, back forward, side, back forward, side, back forward, side, keep going, side, back forward, side, back forward, side, back forward, with the arms, side, back forward, side, back forward, it's okay, side, back forward, side, back forward. Good job, everybody. So, if you notice, I just kind of added in the arms at the last um, combination. So we're not going to focus on combining the two today. I just wanted you to get the coordination in your body, but just for the heck of it, let's do it without music together. Okay? So right foot back, getting your right foot ready to step side. Five, six, seven, eight, and uh, down, back, forward, and uh, down, back, forward, and uh, down, back, forward, and uh, down, back, forward. Down, back, forward, down, back, forward. Good job, everyone. That was just kind of a little practice. It's okay if you're not getting it this time around. That coordination is very, very tricky for people. And that was the reason why I kind of just threw it in in that last combination that we did. I realized that when people start overthinking about which arms and which legs, it becomes very confusing. But if they just see me do it and they just follow along for some reason, Folks tend to get that a little bit faster. So don't worry too much if you're not getting it this time around. Coordination is tricky for everybody. I definitely didn't get the coordination right for a while. So do not be hard on yourself. We're all just trying to do our best here, okay? Great job on class, everyone. Let's end this lesson with our reverence or our bows. So we are going to start in first position, arms low, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll do a slow plie, one and two. As you straighten, bring the arms up, three and four. I'm looking at my right elbow and then I switch to the left elbow and then I open five, six, melange seven and eight. Plie again, I'm looking at my right hand, one and two, straighten, three and four, open five and six, melange seven, and eight, I'll step right, left hand, bow. I'll come up in high fifth, 
and I'll open my arms and elange and I'll step on left now open my hand and four and five and six and seven and eight so don't worry too much if you don't have this combination or if there's too much arm and head movement happening for you. You have completely forgotten the whole entire combination by the time the music starts. It is slow enough to where you can just follow along and be keeping an eye out on what I'm doing. All right, enough talking, let's bow. Starting in first position. Seven, eight slow plies. One, two, slowly up. Switch sides, open your arms, inhale, exhale, plie, follow the hand, two, follow the hand all the way up to the elbow, switch sides as you open, inhale, step right, one, two, bow, come up. Open the hand, down, step left, curtsy, open, up, extend, down. Congratulations on finishing lesson one of the beginner series. I hope that this has been a fun challenge for you. As always, if you have any questions or if something was not explained well enough, please, please feel free to let me know. Your feedback is what helps the series to get even better. So please don't be shy. All right, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone.